and welcome to the absolutely beautiful Charente here in the southwest of France. Uh, yeah, I thought I'd make a quick video. I've got a few things on my mind and um, might even have a little rant. It's been a while since I had a little rant. Um, a little rant about a dog. Uh, this dog, yeah, it's uh, something's on my mind and I'm just gonna share some, share some views and get your opinions and I might leave, leave you open to attack. <laughs> very busy bee over the last 24 hours. I've been busy and uh, I thought I'd come out and share what I've been doing with you. So the field is looking absolutely immaculate. I'm gonna talk about that dog in a second. Just wanna run something by you. And uh, you know what I was gonna ask? This is what I was thinking about while I was spending about two and a half hours mowing this one acre field. I know that sounds quite daft to be mowing a field, but um, don't you ever think sometimes think to yourself sometimes that um, people have got things worked out? You watch these YouTube channels, you think, yeah, they know what they're doing. They've got a plan and they're just running with it and they're just going with it. Am I the only YouTube channel where they go, yeah, not really sure what I should do, not really sure. And I ask my subscribers and I love to talk to my subscribers. I am here in the middle of nowhere. Uh, so it's a good way of getting a varied opinion from people that have you know, done things like this in the past and have got other opinions and you know, other ideas. I love it, I love ideas. And um, yeah, do you ever think, well, they know what they're doing. <laughs> you know, you see these fruit cakes with these chateaux, you know, and they are fruit cakes. I mean, I don't know what the long term, the long term plan is for these people. Um, unless they're multi-millionaires, I think they're kind of in trouble. But um, yeah, I, uh, I digress. Um, God, it's getting quite windy. I think the weather in the UK is a bit terrible today, isn't it? Getting a lot of rain. I think we're gonna get a bit of rain over the next 24 hours here as well, in for about, I don't know, inch or so tomorrow maybe two. Um, see how easily distracted I am. Um, yeah, and uh, <laughs> I was thinking while I was mowing, thinking, yeah, you don't really know why you're mowing this. And uh, I was trying to justify the, the craziness of mowing a field <laughs> to myself while I was doing it. And um, I sort of came to the conclusion that basically what I'm doing, I'm creating like a blank slate. You know, like, um, like before you cooked a meal in the kitchen, you'd make sure the kitchen was clean, wouldn't you? And that's kind of what I'm doing, because I do get people say, Mark, what are you doing? <laughs> What's the plan? Where's your animals? What's this? What's that? And uh, yeah, I don't have the answers. And that's why I was kind of thinking, does everyone have the answers? I know there's people that um, have YouTube channels that watch this, watch this channel. Have you got it all sussed out? Have you got a plan? <laughs> do you know what I mean? I mean, I live in the middle of nowhere, kind of, 10 miles to the nearest supermarket kind of thing. And you see these people, you see these people, a lot of people living in um, Portugal. Lots of uh, YouTube channels in Portugal. Uh, British people and uh, others move to Portugal and they literally live in the middle of nowhere. I mean, what's the plan long term? Do you know what I mean? If you happen to be in a wheelchair at some point or on crutches, how does that work? How does that work with living in, you know, kind of like a desert? I, I don't know. Anyway, so yeah, what I'm doing is uh, I'm creating a, a blank slate or a clean kitchen. Uh, to make a plan, <laughs> to make a plan on. So uh, yeah, I've got to talk about something. It's, it's niggled me for ages. I, I kind of brushed upon it a couple of weeks ago. Um, about, right, I'll just give you a heads up. The people that work and volunteer around animal sanctuaries and uh, refuges, you know, for cats and dogs and uh, chickens and goats, these people are amazing people. So I would never want anyone to think that I'm digging them out or having a pop or criticizing. Um, but something's on my mind. And 
a, um, a post came up on social media. Not that I use social media, don't ask me about it. <laughs> um, I do happen to have a Facebook account. Um, just to uh, stay in contact with various people. And uh, a photo popped up with a little story. And it said about this dog. And uh, it said, this dog is just about to start its seventh year at the refuge. And I was like, what? Seventh year at the refuge? And I, uh, I read the story and it said, this dog arrived when he was eight months old and he's now nearly seven. And I was like, no, that, that can't be right, can it? That can't be right. And I've, it's been on my mind, you know, for, for ages, this story. Because uh, a post popped up a couple of weeks ago, you may have seen it, uh, of a local refuge, say local, within about an hour away, uh, have just put their prices up. And it can now cost you up to 350 euros. Now, they put their prices up, quite a lot, to um, 350 euros to rehome a dog or a puppy, I think, in that case. Um, and even cats are 80 euros to rehome. Now, there are cats and dogs all over France, you know, waiting to be rehomed. A post came up the other day, and I'm so close to responding. Someone trying to rehome a um, Australian sheepdog, and it looked absolutely adorable. But I think it would just take up so much of my time, and I don't think I'd get much done, a dog that would need, that particular dog that would need so much exercise. Anyway, I digress, I didn't contact them. And it was free, you know, it wasn't like, oh no, you can have the dog in exchange for hundreds of euros. So here's my cynical question, and you could attack me if you like, but it's nothing personal. Um, are these dogs not held to ransom, but you know, that dog that um, has been in the sanctuary for seven, or sanctuary, it's not sanctuary, refuge for seven years. If I go in there and say, yeah, I'd like to rehome it, they say, oh, that'd be 300 euros, please. <laughs> but surely if I gave you a donation of maybe 50 euros, that would, you know, the priority is obviously to rehome the dog. Well, that's, that's the question, isn't it? Is the priority to rehome the dog? Or is the priority to raise money? I mean, are we, are they, like I said, I'm not digging them out personally, are they holding the dog's ransom? Like, or are they car dealers for dogs? You know, this is the price of the dog and they're just not being honest. They say, oh no, no, we sell dogs. Yeah, put it in the comments, I'd love to know. As I say, it's nothing personal. I know a lot of these places, a lot of charities are driven by ego. And I talk about ego quite a lot because if you've got a YouTube channel, you've got an ego and uh, you just have to know how to keep it under control, as I've said before. Um, yeah, but are these charities purely egotistical, not purely, egotistical exercises? Are they there to make the person running the charity feel good? Are they there to make money? Because there's lots of money going through the hands and lots of money going to vets. I mean, there's one particular refu refuge spends a quarter of a million pounds a year at the local vet. So that vet is quite invested in keeping that sanctuary going. I mean, you kind of think, okay, they've got 500 dogs or how many hundreds of dogs they've got. You kind of think, well, if I go in there and rehome all of them at 300 quid a pop, obviously, this is just, just me chatting, then they have no stock. I mean, from a car dealer's point of view, that's fantastic because they go out and buy more cars. But once a refuge is out of dogs, they're out of business, aren't they? And the vet's out of business, not out of business, but it loses that income. So it's not in their interest to rehome every dog, is it? Being very cynical or skeptical. Anyway, that was, uh, that was really on my mind. Um, yeah, it's really nice to get out in the field, wander around in my short grass, <laughs> in my, in my uh, crazy little world. Yes, yeah, so I've been in my element. I'm having a time of my life here. And a lot of people think, oh, Mark's got issues. No, I haven't, I, I'm, I'm in paradise bit of a windy paradise this morning. Um, I was out yesterday sorting out this, uh, I've got some fence posts and there's more fence posts available now. I can go and pick some up. I might go and pick some up this afternoon to start putting a, uh, putting a fence along uh, the edge of my field. 
and uh, yeah, I was uh, I was looking, I was laying down some posts on the ground because I'm thinking about leaving like a five or six foot gap along the edge of my field for a walkway to go down. Yeah, I've spoken about that before. Anyway, let me know your comments. Bit of a strange video from me today. But I had things on my mind, and after all, this is my video diary, isn't it? I hope all is well. I just want to say thank you to all uh, my amazing uh, subscribers. Thank you for all your comments on my last video. Interesting talking about the back of the house and an outdoor kitchen, isn't it? And I'll talk about that probably loads of times in the future. And uh, yeah, thank you for all those guys and girls out there that are supporting the channel. You're making things happen. Things are good. Things are going to be good. Take care. See you later.